Welcome back to the course on properties of agriculture and biosystems materials. This is the introduction to the course where we talk about the importance and significance of studying the properties of AB materials. Then we'll have a walkthrough of the uh, material properties we are going to discuss throughout the duration of the course. Okay, what is that? It's a pile of uh, peanuts. I think I've forgotten the scientific name of peanut. Uh, I think it's something hypogea, uh, Arrakis hypogea, right? Okay, good thing we're not talking about the uh, mere biology of agriculture and biosystems or AB materials. Uh, we are instead uh, interested in the physics or biophysical nature exactly of these materials. So going back to the picture, uh, what particular, oh, what what particular observation can you make of the uh, pile of peanuts? Well, for me, it will be the long-standing reason why that piece on the top stays there without a significant force to make it fall to the same level as the other pieces. In this subject, uh, we are uh, to talk more of such peculiarities. So we begin with why do we have to study such uh, peculiarities in the first place. Uh, we will thus begin with the course with the importance and significance of the various properties of AB materials. Before everything else though, we will need to acquaint ourselves with what AB materials are. Biosystems uh, mean biological systems. So AB materials uh, pertain to agricultural based uh, materials or residues, including plant, animal, and marine materials or residues, or shall we say biological materials, used as they are, thus in their natural state or as inputs in the manufacture of commercial or industrial food and or non-food products. The definition is self-explanatory, but we can try to understand this with examples. Let us identify with the following. Are AB materials. How about this uh, beef blade? This is a portion cut from a slaughtered cow, processed but remains uncooked or raw. Something uh, you buy from the wet or public market or from the supermarket. So this is an agricultural material still because it has gone one processing transformation. Okay, how about rice sod, a byproduct of the rice milling process? It is the non-edible outer covering of the unpolished rice grain. What are its uses? It could be used as a filler in concrete, so a building material. It could also be a fuel to a rice hull fed burner, thus energy. So from its sources and uses, rice hull is an agricultural material. How about this one? Okay. It's cow dung. Okay. Similar to rice hull, it is an energy source. This is a natural material used for cooking and heating, a common practice in uh, South Asia and Africa. Thus, it is an AB material. One thing I use to determine if it is a biological material in the confines of our discipline as AB engineers is to ask myself if the material in question has value added tax in the Philippines. Uh, VAT, okay, if, if, if it does, how many layers of VAT does it have? It's just one layer uh, of value adding was done, okay, like this. Uh, bowl of flour, uh, it still is within our realm. If more just like this cake, okay, then it's no longer in our domain, despite still being a uh, food material. So also flour remains a raw material for input to an end product that is food, like the cake. Nobody eats flour 
as it is. Well, I personally have not, but some may have. How about you, students? Have you eaten raw flour? Well, purposely. Okay. Well, uh, well um, we're going to discuss the general five categories of, of properties of AB materials. And we have thermal, optical, physical, mechanical, and electrical. The primary reason we are, why we are interested in the properties of AB materials is because any property affecting uh, this or, or the processing or handling of these materials are deemed an engineering property. So far, you have uh, a background on the uh, thermodynamic and heat transfer properties of matter. If you recall your heat engine, the Carnot cycle, uh, engineering, the engineering properties such as enthalpy, sensible and latent heat become obvious properties of concern in the operation of a heat engine. Same goes with these AB materials, which are uh, processed and handled throughout the uh, various operations of agricultural activities. Here are some properties according to their category. Okay, some of these properties you have encountered uh, already, while well, some may be new to you. For thermal, all these specific heat, conductivity, boiling, and freezing points you have gone through with your uh, thermodynamics and heat transfer. I believe gloss, color, and translucency are new. Gloss is the uh, degree of shininess of a material. Translucency is the degree of permittivity to, of light, uh, to light of a material. Uh, the physical are obvious, as most of you are familiar with geometry, density, uh, shape, size, and porosity. The structure, usually chemical in nature, is a review of your chemistry, but now encompassing biochemical properties, which should be new to you, uh, unless you have taken up organic chemistry. The mechanical and the electrical are a review of your mechanics and electromagnetism. The same concepts of, uh, uh, yes, for mechanical, the same concepts of stress and uh, deformation of elastic bodies from your Newtonian mechanics are similarly applicable to uh, deformable AB uh, materials. Although this time, uh, properties such as creep and viscosity consider uh, plastic deformation. The electrical properties um, consider the material attrib attributes in relation to the collective nature of the microscopic electron. Electricity and magnetism are a phenomena relying on the electron structure and behavior of, uh, in an AB material. Listed here are permittivity, which is a measure of the uh, dielectric property of a material, and conductivity. The course will focus merely on the dielectric property of AB materials. All these properties are manifestations of the chemical nature and structure of an AB uh, material over uh, scales from the microscopic to the macroscopic. The interrelation of the uh, chemical composition and structure of an AB material suggests the correlation of these properties. Thus, changing one property by processing the AB material can be difficult, if ever possible. Expect AB materials to have compositional vari variations, heterogeneity, and anisotropy. Besides the inherent individual variations, since uh, biological materials have inherent genetic variations. For a simpler appreciation of the composition and structure relationship, take the case of the isomers of uh, pentane, as shown. These materials have the same composition, same number of atoms, but different structure. In biological materials, uh, take note of the adage note to thumbprints thumbprints are the same. Composition varies according to the genetic and phenotypic, environmental, processing, and handling conditions of the material. Take the example of rice. 
The sole process of drying the rice paddy from its harvest moisture content of around 25 moisture content dry bases to around 9 to 14 moisture content dry bases increases the shelf life of the rice paddy from a week or even days to months or years. The same is true with poultry meat. Chicken meat, chilled to zero to seven uh, degrees Celsius, lengthens the life of the material from a day to seven days. Blast freezing the chicken to below zero degrees Celsius even extends it to six months to some degree. The degree of cleanliness of uh, handling the microbiological load of the material can extend it to two years. Google yakitori or skewered chicken parts and you will see this, okay? Tuna harvested from the Mindanao and Sulu Seas are blast frozen so they can be transported to Metro Manila where the demand is high or even import imported abroad. In the course of transport, continuity of the cold chain is important for chilled and frozen products. Breaking the cold chain can have significant ramifications on the product and a business. I know of a case where some 9 tons, 9,000 kilograms of poultry meat had to be reprocessed with some 50% of the volume needed to be condemned as unfit for human consumption. In all these scenarios, the uh, properties of AB materials have bearing on their shelf life. Moisture content for the rice paddy and internal temperature for chilled and frozen products are uh, necessary critical properties needing monitoring for the end goal of extending product shelf life. We are not limited to product life and we will go through them in the duration of the course. So why are the properties of AB materials important again? Let us uh, consider the mechanical properties of some common grains, wheat, rice, corn, potato, soybean, as shown in table one. The properties uh, shown such as uh, elastic modulus, uh, Poisson's ratio, yield strength and restitution coefficient uh, give values that are uh, significant in the processing and handling of these materials, okay? Particularly bulk, bulk material uh, properties such as shown uh, determine how the materials behave in bulk as in a silo. The silo as shown in uh, figure five, okay, it's the background picture, have controlled conditions to maintain the properties of materials. Uh, temperature and moisture content, for example, uh, for the grains uh, depicted. Take the case of rice, okay? Consumers prefer cool head rice. I think Filipinos are not keen on this, but the consumers abroad, like the Japanese and Korean, dislike broken grains. Thus, kernel breakage should be avoided. Therefore, from the given table, uh, the elastic modulus is an important property. How rice may break during handling in a silo. Thus, here the 10.6 MPA or megapascals value is a critical parameter that should be incorporated in the design of a silo. Uh, AB engineers uh, use the properties of AB materials as inputs in their design. And okay. Uh, that's all for lecture one. I'm going to meet you uh, in the next lecture for the uh, walkthrough of the different uh, AB materials that we're going to tackle in the uh, course. Thank you.